Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at some of the philosophy and ideas behind the films of Pedro Almodóvar. I'm going to start by looking at Jean-Paul Sartre, a French philosopher who you might have heard of. He's famous for phenomenology, which you might not have heard of, and existentialism, that you will have heard of. Phenomenology. If you think that we can't have direct knowledge of the universe, that everything we know and see and think is through our senses, our conceptualization, things like space and time, whether things actually are there or not there, whether a thing is even a thing. So you get this sense of the universe as being absurd. But at the same time, it's a very creative idea because even seeing things, thinking about things, everything is an act of creativity by the person who is perceiving. Existentialism then follows on from this. If you think the universe is absurd, has no meaning, we are the ones who give it meaning. We're the ones who give meaning to our own existence. There isn't this idea that there is an essence, that you have an essence that determines what you are, and therefore how you're going to behave, how you're going to act follows from what you are. For an existentialist, it's the other way around. What you do, your existence, determines your essence. So you can, with your decisions, your actions, make you who you are. Now for Sartre, this is a form of freedom. Um, it's a responsibility then that you are having to be authentic, you are going to have to take responsibility for your actions, and also there's no inertia in that you can't say, oh I am now me, you have to carry on doing the things that make you you, and to carry on being the same person, or to be a different person, you can't just assume that everything's done. Um, and he's also very critical of people who show what he calls mauvaise foi, bad faith, who just play a role that society has given them, and don't take responsibility for their own actions and their own authenticity. And you'll see these ideas of authenticity playing a role very strong in the films of Almodovar. Is there any link um, that's been made? Well, for us the idea that we are free of, to make our own destinies is, is quite an obvious one. We've, we've grown up with it. But if you think of someone who was growing up a creative person, a gay person, growing up under a dictatorship, and suddenly finding these ideas, suddenly finding an explosion of, of freedom in the 70s and the 80s, these ideas are very relevant. Um, Carmen Maura, the first of the Chicas Almodovar, or one of the most important early Chicas Almodovar, very influential on, on his thought, um, studied philosophy, and we know that they met um, in a production that they were both working on of Le Mansal, a play by Sartre. And also Almodovar has quoted Sartre talking about his film Volver. El infierno, el cielo, el purgatorio somos nosotros, están dentro de nosotros, ya lo dijo Sartre, mejor que yo. So, examples in this film. We're going to look at Mujeres al borde de un ataque de nervios, and this idea of phenomenology, the idea that fiction and reality, you can play with them. It is intellectual games, it's Almondovar having fun with ideas. Um, the very first thing you see, it looks like a really terrible film set, but he's creating layer of fiction within fiction. This actually turns out later in the film to be a model of her flat that was given to her by the estate agent, who isn't even an actor, it's Almondovar's brother. So he's building up layers of fiction, reality, this idea that nothing is what it seems, that it's all actually creative. It's all, in this case, it points back to him. He's setting this up as a, as a joke um, about his own creativity, his own film. Um, very, very near the beginning of the film as well, we see Ivan in a black and white sequence, which clearly isn't real, it's in black and white. Um, could be a dream that Peppa is having. You can see that... Um, there are geometric shapes as well. This is um, so the universe that's real. We can't have any concept of. We only have our own concepts, like ge geometry, shapes that are, that are man-made things. It's also a reference to um, a book in French called La Jalousie, which jealousy is what Pepe is feeling, but also um, it's the word for this kind of Arabic-looking geometric-shaped um, screen. It's also the name of a very important novel. Um, 
there are messages that go astray they get read by the person bringing the message or someone it's not intended for again that's the way you can't directly experience the universe without some kind of intermediary um, and things get lost things get interrupted things get disrupted um, and games with perspective we see a film of a film uh, we see Peppa through her own glasses it's, it's intellectual games about um, fiction reality and how we experience the universe and, the, and about Amadova creating the film that we're watching existentialism as well in the same film so about authenticity and playing a role in particular in this film about women and whether women are independent or whether women play a role in society where basically they need a man um, it's also played out in the film with the, the kind of conflict throughout the film with blue and red you can see um, a blue lampshade um, making itself uh, making its presence felt there with a red telephone um, and the other characters as well throughout the film, the ones who wear red, the ones who wear blue, and Peppa alternates throughout the film, blue and red, um, reflecting the, the development in the film, whether she is in control or whether she's following a role, if she's being brave, if she's being cowardly. And the end of the film, at the end of the film, which is quite a bizarre ending when you see it just and you watch and you think well that's not very dramatic it's just two women sitting talking but um, two women wearing red sitting talking telling each other the truth uh, two women who've re recently discovered they don't need men for different purposes um, and this idea of talking and telling the truth um, is very important to Almodovar you'll see it in others, uh, other films later on uh, jumping a bit 2002 Abri Conella this is Almodovar playing with a different version, a different aspect of the of the philosophy, which is that if there is no meaning, if there is no God, if there is no authority, um, there is no absolute good, there's no absolute evil. So how do we know what's right and what's wrong? I mean, it may be through the intentions of the person or the consequences of their action. And he's exploring these these um, ideas. He takes a person who commits what we would all agree is a horrendous action but maybe with good intentions maybe with positive consequences the outcome of what he does is that um, she comes back from the coma uh, and he's the one who dies so he's exploring these ideas I'm saying he's in he's in favor of them but he's, he's exploring the philosophy it's not a plot it's not a character it's not a story it's a philosoph philosophical idea exploring how the consequences of that play out uh, there is some blue and there's some red, as we've seen before. Um, again, and also some reflection here, some optical illusions. One person superimposed upon another, inviting you to compare them as moral equivalents or or not. Um, white as well in this film. A lot of white to do with not being or... Also the idea here that he is imposing Benigno. If Almodovar does condemn Benigno rather than keeping a kind of even-handed and open question about morality it seems to be for this existential idea of him imposing an identity on people okay so she's in a coma she's wearing white she's in a hospital but also she's white in that things are being imposed on her not just her as well the, the dance teacher as well who forces her back into dance and, and other people um, and that's in a way, if, if Almodovar does condemn Benigno, it's, it's because he's not taking control of his own life, he's not being authentic, he's not being a proper existentialist. Benigno wants to be the woman in the picture, in the book, by Marco. He, he, even the crime that he commits, it seems to be more about losing yourself inside someone else, rather than an actual sexual act. Um, so you can see the the existential ideas. Almodovar is exploring them and playing them, playing with them here. Um, just while we're there, another colour emerging as well. In that, between all this existential angst and morality and how to live your life in the foreground with the red and the blue, in the background, picking up on this green, very deliberate here for the background of just biological cycle of life and death, um, that you'll see co coming later in Volver as well. Right, back to the themes that, that really obsess Almodovar, um, authenticity and death. This is 1999, Todo sobre mi madre, um, and you can see here um, Manuela, 
in red. She, up to this point, has had an interesting life. She grew up in a small town in Argentina, married her childhood sweetheart. He left for Europe. Um, when she came to join him, he was living as a woman. Um, she then took control of her life, took her, her baby, left, went to Madrid, started a new life. It does involve some of, as you typically with Almodovar, a bit of acting, um, playing a role. So she does has part of her job is that she works in a hospital and she works in in role play with doctors who would then have to talk to the family of people who have been killed in an accident or to see if their family would be persuaded to donate the organs. Um, anyway, so she's there. Her son, you can see he's wearing blue. The thing is she's never told him the past. She's never told him the story. There's an incomplete thing there. He doesn't know about his dad, etc. Okay? And the whole play is based, the whole film is based on what happens when her son dies. And it's this thing of, that's bugging Almodovar, of what is the point of this existentialist life, of taking responsibility, of being authentic, of being being yourself, if we're all going to die, if your loved ones are going to die, if you're going to die, if there's ju just the existence of death itself. So she has to try and pull her life back together. You can see other people in the film are playing out the blue, the red, the he taking control, the, the, the being fake. So the, the, uh, this is Rosa and her mother. Her mother lives by making forgeries. Um, but Manuela is just in a mess and it's, it's just a study of, it's a very negative film in a way of someone, why bother, why struggle to make your life authentic when you're just faced with death. Uh, there's also a character called Uma Rojo. It's this, like smoke. It's red, but it's smoke. And she talks about how life is uh, illusory and success is just illusory and why bother um, there's a, another character Agrado, who goes on stage and gives a great parody of existentialism saying about how the more authentic you are more authentic the more you make yourself how you dream of being um, so she talks about how much money she spent on the silicon in her breasts and her lips and on her cheeks and everything um, it's a great um, explanation of existentialism and becoming who you want to be uh, but it's obviously very funny and it's a parody. There's also in the film intellectual parallels that follow through the whole film so all about Eve and um, A Streetcar Named Desire by Tennessee Williams they run in parallel to Manuela's life. The question there is to what extent do they add anything to the emotional impact of a woman whose son's been killed and she's trying to rebuild her life um, and to what extent are these just intellectual games? And at the end, Amadoya dedicates it to Betty Davis and all the actresses who have been played actresses, to women who act, men who act and become women. But really, it's a very unsatisfactory ending. It's a fake ending. Um, there are there are two or three details. There's things like um, they talk about Videla, the Argentinian. Um, dictator, general, going to prison, which hadn't actually happened when this film was made. Uh, there's the train, the fast train from Madrid to Barcelona, which didn't exist at the time. There's the baby that neutralises the AIDS in its, in its bloodstream, which hadn't happened at the time either. And if you look at the synopsis of the film that Almodovar gives, it had a very different ending. It had um, a bit like Women on the Verge of Nervous Breakdown. It had Manuela sitting down and talking, telling the new baby the truth that she'd never told to her own son. Um, and Amadora didn't do that ending, he chickened out of it, he couldn't bring the whole thing of it's fine, um, there's a point to life, you can make a point to life. Um, he, I think he was still very bound up with the problem of death and, and why, why would you bother? Which brings us to Volver, which is very definitely about death. Uh, the rituals in the village, it starts um, it starts in the graveyard with, the f with people cleaning their, their loved ones' graves and Agostina, who's even got her own grave even though she hasn't died yet. Um, there's some other of the themes that we're familiar with. This is um, the theme of lack of authority. So women um, make up their own rules, have their own laws, their own society, they help each other. Even the um, hairdressers is illegal. Um, the women who help each other 
um, in, in, when Raimunda needs food for her restaurant and people to help with the restaurant, and even when your husband is killed, you don't you don't call the police. You um, get a friend with a blue van and a red freezer, and you wear a blue top, and she wears a red top, and you uh, take him to the place he loved best by the river, um, just like in the, in um, Todo sobre mi madre, where he wanted to go back to Argentina to be to see the town, to see the river, or you bury him in the place he loved best by the river. There's also some intellectual games going on through the whole film. There's references to Bellissima and Italian neorealism. Um, there's some reflections and um, visual illusions going on with the big red bus, with the reflection and the movement there of the time of the journey. Uh, the windmills from Don Quixote de la Mancha that are now become wind turbines. Um, but basically, it is about um, authenticity and death. Um, by the end, Penelope Cruz seems reconciled to uh, wearing the green cardigan that seems to represent the biological cycle of life and death. But also the big scene before the end where she sits down and she talks to her mother and they tell each other all the things that, they have, hap that have happened that they couldn't have told each other had her mum really died. So it takes the message, or takes the question, from Todo sobre mi madre, which is, why, if we're going to all, if we're all going to die, if our loved ones are going to die, why should we bother to be authentic? And it takes that and flips it, and it says, you've only got one choice, you've only got one chance, you've only got one life. Don't mess it up. Make the most of this life. So it's a much more positive version of the philosophy in this in this film.